Hello there. This is the Marketplace and Event on Ben TV. We're glad to be here with you again this evening. My name is Tommy C. Ojo, and I'm live at the residence of Reverend Mother Esther Bimbola Ajayi. This week was a trying week for Nigeria. Young people have been protesting for over 15 days, wanting to end police brutality, end bad governance. It started with police brutality and the incessant killings by the men of the Nigerian police force, but then metamorphosed into a bigger demand, put an end to corruption in governance, put an end to bad governance, let us have the dividends of democracy. These were some of their demands. It became a very bloody Tuesday on the 20th of October 2020. A lot of people landed in the hospital. There were reports of many being killed. And there were reports of so many being wounded with gunshot wounds. How were they shot are questions that must be answered. What should happen? How do we heal our nation after this difficult time? We are paying visits to some of the custodian of our nation, religious leaders who have the vested interest in our nation. So we decided to pay a visit on Reverend Mother Abimbola Istajayi the General Overseer of the Love of Christ Generation Church and our new cathedral here in Nigeria. We decided to pay a visit and have our own two cents about what must be done to heal our nation and of course to position the youths for a better future and to give us the Nigeria of our dreams. Join us as we come along on this journey. The conversation actually when we start from the protests that happened about 14 days yes. until we were forced to bring it to an abrupt end. Mm. And uh, the most popular protest happened at your backyard. Yes. At Lekki here. Yes. Were you aware? Obviously, I'm aware. I'm in Nigeria. I'm in Lagos. And I live in Lekki. So there is nobody that will be in Lekki area that will not be aware that it was there. People were talking about, I didn't see it, but we heard about it. And um, I'm a pastor. I always go back to the Bible. There's an incident in the book of um, 2 Kings, chapter 6 and chapter 7. Um, the king was going, and um, two women came running after the king. They, oh, king, help me. And the king replied, was just joking and uh, uh, jesting about what they were saying. Where will I help you from? Is it from the wine press of the, or from the uh, oil press? And then the woman did not answer. The, the woman continued her story that, ah, we are two women, who, and uh, we had this woman's uh, child yesterday night. And we said we, sh we are going to eat our own today. And she has gone to hide the child. So... Uh, the king did not reply. It's important. Second Kings chapters um, 6 and 7. It's important you read it. And then as, as he was going, he tore his clothes. And then prophet Elisha heard about it. And then he said, thus says the Lord, that by this time tomorrow, uh, the fine flour and barley shall be sold for one shekel at the gate of uh, Samaria. What am I trying to say? Most of the time, people that are, it's always the king that we see the last famine. Famine will never come to the king on time because his banquet will be set, his table is always ready because he's not the one that is going directly to the market. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, some things happen. <laughs> some people at Hems of Affairs might be the last set of people to hear. Because you cannot be here and be there at the same time. But um, there's an adage in Yoruba, but when those people are honest and straightforward, the king will hear the correct thing on time. And then this is the area where we have to be very, very careful in this country. God will help us. Too. So that those people that are supposed to hear first won't be the people that will hear last especially factual things. That book of um, Philippians, I'm a pastor. I always go back to the Bible. 
That book of uh, Philippians, uh, that chapter 4, from verse 9, it says, whatever thing that is pure, whatever thing that is true, whatever thing that is honest, whatever thing that is of good reports. So, <laughs> if there's any fight, we have to be very careful. We must, all, things that are, hmm, lots of things is going on. No? Those kids, I love you. In my church in London, I always say this. I'm one of the oldest persons in my church. I love young people. I love to hear from them. I love to do my things with them. Uh, the youth in Sheruvim and Seraphim, they all know I love them to a fault. The youth in my church, I love them. And um, I always know that I will always hear the facts from them. You understand? And then the way forward is to always make sure that we um, get ourselves conversant with this gift sword of the Spirit, the Bible. Anything that is outside this great book of God, you have to start thinking again. No? Incessant killings of young people, harassment of young people must come to an end. But somehow it degenerated into illegality. Some miscreants in society took advantage of a good thing and turn it into a bad thing. What can you say about the carnage that took place after that protest? Let me tell you, those kids were beautiful. I saw it on the social media. I, think, I didn't see them physically on the street, but on the social media. And let me tell you this. I always say this. I say it anytime I'm teaching. No child is bad. I have records of kids in uh, England. Brother Kudus, wherever you might be in this world, you'll be hearing me. Right? I always say this. Anytime I face the, the camera, I'm speaking to the whole wide world. They have relegated this child. It's not a, a graduate. It's an architect. And he became a graduate with first class. First class or not. You understand? They have relegated him. They said he can come to nothing. Let me tell you. If I tell you street boy, the boy on the street of London, the, the, that, that knows how to do the, the street gang. But this child gave his life to Christ. He went back to school. Not only did he, he went back to school, he became a graduate and he graduated as an architect with first class honor. He's drawing a lot of things for places that have got name in England. Now, what am I trying to say? Those kids, they came out. They were doing their thing. Even those that people call hoodlums, as far as I am concerned, it's my personal opinion. Everybody have got the right to their own opinion. No child is bad. That child does need a good mentor. Do you understand? Somebody was saying something on the social media. It says, if you are going out for somebody sending you out to do illegality, you ask for that person's child. Where is your child? Why is it that you always invite me for uh, things to go and scatter? Oh, yeah, let your child come along. Do you understand? And then that is the area where I want to but trust my point. Lay emphasis on it. Don't be party to hooliganism. Be party to something nice. What we're asking for is something amazing. It's something that is beautiful. There was a man that was talking. He said, these children are not asking for an uh, elephant's head or something. They are just asking for basic things of life. My children graduated from universities abroad. Let me tell you. The primary, the secondary school and the primary school that my kids went to at the United Kingdom is the public primary school and the public secondary school is more beautiful than the uh, private school we were going before we left for the UK. Basic things of life. Let our environment be nicer. Our schools, our hospitals, end to uh, uh, police brutality. Let's talk to ourselves as human beings, civilized human beings. God-fearing human beings, how hard is that? What is meant for everybody in the country? Not that some people will just go and hoard it. That the money that is supposed to be used for, for a certain consistency to repair their roads, to fix their classrooms, somebody will be hoarding it in their bank account. Those are basic things of life. Those are things that children abroad are enjoying. If you take your kid to a private school in England, or even 
I don't know of America, but I know of the United Kingdom because I live there. Let me tell you, you just choose to do that because the public school is one of the best, all their public schools, best things that can happen to your kids. And these are the basic things. We have got the resources in this great country. I always say this, Nigeria is God's own country. I love this country to a fault. They know me, oh, at the United Kingdom, don't speak against my country anywhere in the world. Don't speak against Nigeria because I will, I will bend down and come to your level. I will grow tall and come to your level. It depends on your level. And these are the things, these are amiable young people we are asking for. And they were so united. They were carrying the country's flag. They have pride in this country concerning everything about, and this, about Nigeria. They say, we will stay here. I will not show you. And I was, I was saying it while I was preaching on, on Sunday, the 25th. I was saying, there was a song about them that I'm trying to learn now. I will by all means learn that song. Most of the time, I don't listen to secular music. I love to listen to gospel music. But when I had the one verse from the other way, and when I grow older, I will be stronger. I said, oh, this is what they were singing. Fantastic. Uh, God has given me a special grace in my life. No matter how pathetic the situation of that child. I just need that child the first 10 minutes in my office. I just call him inside my office or call her inside my office. Sit down. Let's talk. What are you thinking about your life? Is the gate not the son of somebody? Is Oprah Winfrey not the daughter of somebody? Is Fallon Shalaki not the daughter of somebody? Is Desi Danjuma? All those senators, Awoshika, is she not the daughter of somebody? Excuse me, better start thinking about your life. All these Amechi, all these uh, uh, Sawolu, where they're taking from the gutter. Shall we somebody raise them up in this Nigeria? Here, sit down, let's talk. You better know what you are doing with your life. You think you want to go into illegalism? Or you want to be rude, or you want to be stubborn, and you think you'll go anywhere. Then they will start looking at me. At some point, I'll start to talk. I'll talk by the time I mention two or three verses of the Bible. The child will start to cry. They that that is broken. And after about five minutes, we are done. I'll say, then tell me the plan concerning your life. What do you want to study? Where do you want to go? Who is your mentor? I'll tell the person, I can mentor you, you know. I can be your role model. Oh, I'm a pastor. But I have my degree in theology. I will always tell them that, be learned. Whatever profession you want to go into, you want to be a caterer, a business person, a footballer, a basketballer, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to dribble your profession with you, but be learned. Be a graduate. And before you know it, they'll go back to school. Arame Riri? Awesome oh, wonder. wonder. Oh, yes. Good times are here as the motherland, the taste of Africa, brings to London high quality, affordable, and authentic Nigerian cuisine. Our delectable and sumptuous products include, but are not limited to, crayfish, ogbono, egusi, elubo, or further rice, honey beans, gari jebu, and palm oil. We also have non-edible products like black soap, oshadudu, and shea butter, and many, many more. And wait a minute, it only gets better. All our products are 100%, 100% natural. natural, no preservatives. And for a small fee, we offer home delivery services right to your doorstep. The Motherland Taste of Africa. For your prompt and reliable orders, do call plus four four seven four three eight nine zero nine zero double two, plus four four seven four six six zero nine six nine three eight, and plus four four seven four eight two three one two one zero five. So remember, for tasty Nigerian food in London, straight to your doorstep, it has to be no other. But the motherland, the, motherland, the, taste, the taste of, of Africa. Africa. So many pastors have a lot to say about this protest. And of course, their dreams for Nigeria and how the Nigerian system must work. So we will be paying attention to their words. 
I've been having a conversation with the former general evangelist of the Christ Apostolic Church, popularly known as CAC, Agbalai Tura, Prophetess Ke Abiara himself, will be speaking to us. And of course, we will go from there to Pentecostal fathers like Bishop Michael Konko of the Redeemed Evangelical Mission. And of course, to our dear Winners Chapel, the Living Faith Church, and we are Bishop David no Uhideko. They have so many messages and they are speaking to both the Nigerian government, to the young people, and they are chatting a course for what must be done to resolve and heal our nation at a critical time like this. And one day, another generation that will say to us, listen, <laughs> that you cannot stop us. I knew it. You can't stop them. If you like, shoot them, they will be there. They have right to say no to impunity. It is called civil disobedience. Civil. Am, am I right? In legal terms, they are not carrying guns. They are not killing anyone. Have you ever seen such protests before in your life? Have you ever seen where people are protesting and cleaning the streets? Have you ever seen that? Taking care of themselves, refusing money? What other thing do you need in Nigeria? Anyone who is against them is an enemy of Nigeria. Oh, yes. I don't know about you. Anyone. Every man has a right, legitimately so, to express their displeasure and pains. Everybody has. Amen. I kept quiet for a while because, listen to me. Amen. In 2015, I warned this nation vehemently, consistently, because I saw the dangers ahead. And you can tell. The most gruesome season in the history of this nation is the last five years. Where lives have no value. Wanton killings here and there. Now they have faced the youth. And because they don't know who is next, they have a right to say no. <laughs> Matthew 24, verse uh, 3 to, uh, to 12, that in the last day there will be a such thing happen. And again, um, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, and we realize that uh, such thing, Christ, the Bible has told us about that. So it's not a new thing, but it's a very suck. Uh, that all, th all these things happen. It is a very costly uh, mistake, you know, to kill the, you know, to kill the, uh, our youth during their, you know, peaceful uh, demonstration. Yes, so protest. So it is a very bad. But uh, we will never be, you know, uh, we will never be worried about that. It is a work of Satan. The Satan wage against Nigeria. So we can see uh, Boko Haram, bandit, and you know, kidnapping, and so on and so forth. Many areas that Satan wage war against Nigeria. It's, it is a Satan, it is a hand of uh, Satan. We must not blame anybody. It's Satan that wants to fight, you know, Nigeria. 
Uh, I just want to advise the, you know, the government and uh, you know the governor and uh, all those in the power. Number one, the Bible says John 14, they must not let their mind be troubled about all these that things. But I want to advise them that any time that uh, people demand something, they must not waste time to attend them. Because we are the democracy. Democracy is the government of the people by the people and for the people. So uh, if they don't attend to the people that fold them to power, it will be a result of chaos. Because, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that is it now. Because people are hungry. People are hungry. I mean, you can see the, you know, the place where they put food, uh, uh, the food that they want to give to the people. I mean, you can see the the, the problem. When they are hungry, they loot everything, and the chaos is all, is all over. So I want to advise the, all the, the, the government and, uh, you know, uh, to take immediately to listen to, you know, to the any of the people because the people fold them to, to power. <laughs> I'm not going to